Now we'll talk about the examination of tendon reflexes. There are multiple reflexes present for multiple muscles in the body. Therefore, by convention, we choose a few to examine in a patient for a screening neurologic exam. We will evaluate the biceps, the triceps, the brachioradialis, knee and ankle jerk reflexes on both sides. To elicit a reflex, it's necessary to stretch the muscle or the tendon attached to the muscle. And therefore, you must strike over one of these areas in order to elicit the reflex. It's also important that the patient's limb be in relaxed position, possibly with the muscle slightly stretched. In individuals who are obese, it may be necessary to palpate the tendon prior to striking over the tendon in order to elicit the reflex. In other patients, this may not be necessary. I will um, show how the reflexes are elicited. I would also comment that many of our decisions about pathology are based on asymmetries in the neurological exam, and therefore in the deep tendon reflex exam, it's very important to look for asymmetry between the reflexes. If you have difficulty eliciting a reflex one way that can be helpful is to use the gendrastic maneuver, which is to have the patient clasp their hands together and pull out right before you strike the tendon of interest. I will start with the biceps reflex. In the patient's relaxed, slightly flexed position, I palpate the biceps tendon and tap over that tendon, thus eliciting a, a symmetrical reflex in this individual. The triceps reflex is more difficult. Some positions that can be helpful in eliciting the reflex are to have the patient dangle their forearm and then to palpate the triceps tendon and strike over that tendon. Another position that helps to get the arm into relaxation is to cradle the patient's arm on your forearm and then again to strike over the triceps tendon. The brachioradialis reflex is elicited by striking over the distal radius and the brachioradialis muscle. The knee jerk is elicited by striking over the patellar tendon just below the patella. And the Achilles reflex elicited by striking over the Achilles tendon. It's important to make sure that the foot is partially dorsiflexed so that the tendon is partially stretched before trying to elicit the reflex. If you have difficulty eliciting the reflex in that position, some other positions that can be used are as follows. You can cross the patient's foot over their opposite leg and elicit the reflex this way or you can even strike the bottom of the foot. To evaluate for clonus, uh, I would bring the patient's knee up, just let your leg be as loose as possible, good, and briskly dorsiflex the foot holding it in that position. If I feel a repeated beating of the foot, it is a sign of clonus. On our grading scale of reflexes, clonus gives us a grade four reflex. A grade three reflex is when you see spread of the reflex to adjacent muscle groups. For example, if I strike over the patellar tendon on the right side and I see a contraction of the thigh or quadriceps muscle on the opposite side, that would be a grade three reflex. Grade two is normal, grade one is reduced compared to normal, and grade zero is when you don't see any reflex at all. The Babinski or plantar reflex is elicited by stroking the outside and 
uh, middle portion of the foot with a noxious stimulus. This stimulus should be applied lightly, as, as lightly as elicits the response. The object is stroked from the heel towards the toe and then medial towards the great toe. A normal response is curling under of all of the toes, as this patient shows. An abnormal response is dorsiflexion of the great toe with spreading of the small toes.